It's simple, really. Great stories with a good cup of tea. It's the Tea with Mike show. Okay, guys, welcome uh, to another story time. I'm uh, Tea with Mike, and uh, today it gives me uh, the great pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, Alex to uh, the Tea with Mike show. How's Hi. it going today, Alex? Good, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. And so, I mean, Alex actually today are going to be talking mainly about the uh, the show called uh, the other uh, the show called the other Josh Cohen which is um, playing in uh, Calgary uh, it opens uh, later this month and it's playing at the uh, Vertigo Theatre and uh, this show is uh, being put on by um, Brinton uh, Theatrics mm-hmm. right, Theatrical yeah. yeah and and, and they're, they're described as a, a fairly new c- company uh, uh, filled with uh, lots of multi-talented people that uh, that are uh, making their own stamp on the uh, theater and art scene in Calgary and, and who knows where else in the future. Uh, so before we jump into that, we're, we're going to start with the, the, the standard uh, tea fact. And so today's uh, tea fact is... Uh, the leaves from the raspberry plant uh, can actually be steeped to produce a herbal tea. Uh, and, um, I know it sounds, <laughs> sounds quite tasty. And so, and so this uh, fact comes from teahow.com. So again, Alex, thanks for being here. So we're just yeah. going to j- jump right into it. So do you want to start by telling us a little bit about the theater company, a little bit about you, you and uh, we'll start there. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, like you said, the show's being put on by Burnton Theatricals, um, and I guess most people would know them from their Stage West for Kids shows that they do, um, and that's how I came to know about them. I did a show for them four years ago, I think, called Little Red Riding Hood versus the Big Bad Wolf. Nice. Uh, but they also do, once or twice a year, they put on a show that's more for adults. Uh, in the past, they've done musicals like Title of Show, uh, they've done little plays like You and I um, and other ones. And this year, they're doing a show called The Other Josh Cohen, of which I am a cast member for. Uh, it's a it's a crazy show. All the actors play their own instruments throughout. Um, and uh, the show has our lead, Josh Cohen, but he's also played by a narrator version of himself, A Year in the Future, um, hence the other Josh Cohen. We have two Josh Uh on stage. Um, Yeah, and it just takes us through a year in his life uh, that didn't go very well and what he did um, to find himself in a much better position a year later. Awesome. Uh, And do you want to talk uh, a little bit to uh, kind of the the setting and the environment of the play? Yeah, sure. So it takes place in New York City. Uh, All the the, um, action actually takes place within... Josh's apartment, that's our set. And uh, the the cool thing I think about the show is that as the audience is filing into the show, uh, Josh Cohen's apartment is being robbed on stage. (laughs) And that's that's how we start the show, with his empty apartment. Um, And then we go from there. Awesome. So, 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 as the audience is coming in, so is the pre-show the apartment being robbed, and then the house lights go down, and then obviously whatever lighting is that comes up, and, it, and it's an empty an apartment. That's on yeah. The stage. yeah, yeah. It's pretty, pretty neat. I feel bad for whoever has to set all those props to only take them down during the pre-show. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'll be a neat experience. So if you are coming, make sure you get there early because you won't want to miss. Uh, otherwise, you've missed a key piece of action. Yes, um, exactly. Um, so, so, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the process of the of the show. Um, how long has this kind of been in the works? How kind of, if you know, how long ago was it cast? How long are you rehearsing for? Mm-hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. A bit of timeline. Yeah, uh, so I work, um, my kind of main field of work is this kind of stuff where I'm acting um, and playing instruments. That's kind of where I've found my niche, I guess, as an actor. Uh, And Chris Stockton, our director, uh, and the AD of the company came to me a year ago, I think, around this time a year ago. 
uh, and told me about the show that he had just seen in New York called The Other Josh Cohen, and all the actors played their own instruments, and Alex, would that be something you'd be interested in? And I was like, yes, please! <laughs> <laughs> um, so Chris saw it um, kind of around this time last year um, and was really inspired by the message of the story, which is to always um, seek kindness above all, all else, to hope when you can't hope anymore. Uh, and he, he thought that'd be a great thing to present to Burnton audiences. Um, and the cool thing about the show is that it's all inspired by Neil Diamond songs and Neil Diamond himself actually makes an appearance. Um, and uh, one of the neat things about our show is that we have uh, Calgary's own Karen Johnson Diamond who in know, who the show. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, her last name is Diamond for a reason. Uh, she kind of, she picked it herself because she loves Neil Diamond so much. Yeah. She's a Neil Diamond super fan. Um, and she gets to play Neil Diamond in this show. I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of a dream come true for her. Uh, she's been giving us all the Neil Diamond facts throughout rehearsal. Um, and then for, in terms of the rest of the cast, it's really buffed out by some of uh, Calgary's best actors and musicians. We've got Eric Wigston, who's great at virtually every instrument, and Melissa Dorsey Matheson, who's the same way, uh, Trevor Lee, who audiences haven't seen for a while, but he's just killing it. He got handed an accordion and he was like, sure, I can play this. Nice. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's just a, a really great group of people. Chris Duffy is playing our narrator and Kevin Cambridge is Josh Cohen. So it's a great group of people and uh, we're just having a blast. Oh. Awesome. So, so, so then, so if if you were to almost do like an elevator pitch about the show, why people should kind of come see it, like what would it be in maybe a couple of sentences? Oh, oh gosh, I haven't. Nobody thought about that. knows the magic <laughs> that's going on in the rehearsal room. Yeah. Uh, well, I would say if you are a fan of pop culture, there is probably something that is going to make you chuckle in the show. We talk about Star Wars. We talk about Willy Wonka. Like, uh, it's a love letter to New York. So there's really something in it for everyone. The music is catchy. I think it's almost just as interesting to watch us switch from instrument to instrument, sometimes on stage. Um, and it's just like a fun night out of the theater, um, which I think... I think sometimes we can get caught up in like, oh, what's the big message behind the show? And this show has a great message. But sometimes I also want to go to the theater just to sit back and be entertained. Yeah. So this show will definitely do that. Awesome. And you, and you said the show is kind of uh, everyone. So does that mean people can bring their kids to? Is there something that, that younger ch children would uh, be able to relate to? Yeah, I think uh, I've been saying uh, to my friends who have kids, that we acknowledge the existence of um, sex in the show, uh, but we don't go into graphic detail. So I would say it's it's probably family friendly if you're okay with us acknowledging that sex exists in the world. <laughs> awesome. So, so, so like, what, like 12 up or? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. We've been calling it PG-13. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's it's a fun, catchy like the songs are so catchy and it's like a groovy little number so yeah it's really it's a fun show to be a part of cool and then so already we've talked you've touched a little bit on uh, the, the musical uh, instrument element of, of the show now, mm -hmm. obviously it's logical that not all shows have this kind of like element to it so how how has the, the art of music and all these different musical instruments um, how, how has it worked its way into the process of, of the show? Yeah, uh, it, it's complicated, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so I think uh, all of the actors play at least two instruments, I would say, and some oh. play um, quite a bit. Um, so with every song that requires us to have an instrument in our hand or be stationed at a set of keys, um, there's been big conversation about, okay, how do I get from playing the mandolin on this side of the stage to playing a clarinet 
eight bars mm -hmm. later to being on the other side of the stage and uh, playing the piano. So there's been a lot of, we've been calling it instrumentography instead of choreography because mm -hmm. it's just, it's nuts and people are handing off instruments to the to another actor so they can get ready for the next beat where they're playing a different thing and there's instruments in backpacks that people are pulling out to play at just the right moment um so it's 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 quite a quite an art and quite a dance that is happening both on and off off stage uh but it's so fun awesome so so without giving ed like too ma many secret secrets away so, so you, I'm gonna guess that there's some uh, very ca carefully placed instruments like hidden am amongst the set am I there, right? There are uh, we well, like I said we start the show with an empty apartment um, but slowly one by one the instruments start coming out uh, and then sometimes you'll find that the instruments are tucked in places where there maybe would nor wouldn't normally be an instrument or all of a sudden uh, people are coming on stage with instruments that you haven't seen yet, even though it's 40 minutes into the show. Uh, yeah, so I think we play upwards of 25 instruments all together. So it's quite a orchestra. <laughs> nice, and, and and so obviously um, any theater show, um, there's there's a lot of preparation work that, that, that goes in in terms of um, like warmups before the show, mm -hmm. but. Uh, how much time, or the bit, in terms of the big picture, how much time and kind of thought has gone into like maintaining these musical instruments, mm. sourcing the musical instruments? Can, can you speak to a little bit to, to that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, well, I think we're pretty lucky with our music director, who's also in the show, Melissa. Uh, she has been such a good resource for sourcing instruments and just keeping track of all our craziness um she gave us before we even started rehearsal I think like two months even before we started rehearsal we got a complete music breakdown of what we'd be playing in each song and uh the bars in which we'd be playing them um and so uh some of us have our own instruments and we're practicing uh before we started rehearsal but uh we've also rented a ton of instruments from Long and McQuaid uh and they've been absolutely amazing in that respect um but it, it is a, quite a hodgepodge of well I have a ukulele I'll bring it in and I have an electric guitar I can I can contribute nice. to that um so it's been it's been fun it's been uh quite a puzzle like I don't I don't envy her for having to sort through all that um mess but she's done a great job okay awesome and so because as a what so, so in terms of percentage, because mm -hmm. this is a, this is a musical, the show, right? Yes, it is. So, yeah. So, so because it's a musical, um, how how much do you guys have to warm up before the show and and, and like maintain instruments and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. So definitely, all the instruments have to be tuned before we start the show. Um, so that's quite a process, and usually there's about. Um, three of us uh, walking around the space, making sure everything with strings gets a tuning. Um, and then, in terms of the runs, we haven't we haven't gotten to a place yet where we've decided whether or not what we should be doing to warm up. But I bet you we're gonna have to do a song before each show, um, just to like wrap our brains yeah. around, around what we're doing every day. <laughs> uh Oh, I, I didn't really ask, but is is, a, is there a strong uh, singing element to the show along with the yes. instruments? Yeah, so typically while we're playing our instruments, we'll also be singing it. So I like I'll play clarinet from here time to time or Melissa will play brass. And so obviously we can't sing and play those instruments. But if we're playing guitar, if we're playing piano, accordion, we're singing as well. Even drums are, are oh, drums. Wow also singing and that's quite a quite a mind thing so they're doing such a good yeah, job really. of that. <laughs> well, yeah uh, very nice and then so um obviously there's uh, obviously there's uh, it's, it's i'm gonna guess it's quite a fast-paced show if there's lots of music obviously lot, 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 lots of singing and fluidity around around the set can, can you speak maybe in, in, 
as best you can to how this set has been designed and built to help you as the um, actors uh, navigate uh, the space in terms of fluidity, but also safely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the nice thing is it's an empty apartment. Uh, so there's not a ton of things to have to trip over or worry about. Um, the the apartment, I don't want to give too much away, but yes. there, there are some some magic moments with the apartment. Um, it's quite a uh, dreamlike moments where certain things are revealed. So I will say the set really accommodates that. Its emptiness allows for lots of imagination and play within it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the actor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do a lot of things with like with milk crates because the robber leaves behind two milk crates. Um, we have cupboards that uh, we can utilize and maybe even move around. And so there's lots of there's lots of fun um, little Easter eggs for people to to enjoy. Awesome, and then. Uh... And then, again, as best you can, do you want to talk to uh, the types of costumes that uh, people may uh, see um, in the show? Is it, is it pretty simplistic and minimalist and regular everyday street clothes, or is it something different? Well, the fun thing about the show is that we have our Josh Cohens, our, our lead, and our narrator, Josh Cohen, but then everybody else in the show plays upwards of at least seven plus characters. Um, yeah, uh, and they're quite wild characters. I I play, my listing in the program is some people and at least one animal. I don't wanna give away what animal that is, but so I have an animal costume. Um, other people have uh, costumes that allude to Willy Wonka. Uh, we have some Star Wars costumes. Oh, we of course have a Neil Diamond. Uh, costume, uh, which Karen looks absolutely amazing in. Um, so typically with our costumes, we have like our our base and then um, we're adding a sweater, or we're like adding glasses or something something simple. Um, but uh, it's it's definitely crazy. There's also a dance that's going on backstage with all our costumes as well as all our instruments. Um, and luckily, we have a great ASM uh, who is helping us with that. Awesome. So, so obviously, uh, people that obviously go to lots of theatre hopefully, hopefully know that, that there's lots of magic and work that's gone into what's happening on stage. But there's almost it's there's almost a show that goes on like behind the scenes to keep to keep things moving. Yeah, they should. So, kind of how many people are involved on the like the technical side. Yeah, so we have our stage manager who is up in the booth calling all the lights and she's working with a sound person who's up there as well. Um, and then backstage, we just have one gal named Joy who's absolutely killing it. Um, and she helps us with the magic. She helps us with the quick changes, uh, with props um, and with our instruments. Um, and that's that's all that's going to be with us while we're doing the show. But then, of course, we have a set designer, yeah. a costume designer, um, a lighting designer, and our director. Um, so lots of people involved that you will probably never see, but uh, have done a lot of work on the show as well. Awesome. And so because there's only a minimal amount of people like backstage physically, like on the on the ground, how important is uh, teamwork and like working as a unit oh it's so important <laughs> there's I think in the first show or in the first song after it's over I walk off stage and then I have to just hold my hand out so somebody can put a bass into it so they can get a quick change and I just have to stand there and wait it has nothing to do with me but um it's an important part of of being a member of the cast is to recognize when people need help uh and to be able to help them the best you can so there's lots of like uh, accommodating for people or helping with quick changes or tuning their instrument if they can't come off stage to tune it themselves, that kind of thing. So we're really grateful. I'm really grateful to have such a wonderful, giving group of people to do this with. So, so then obviously, because, because you know you have limited resources backstage, as the show is being directed and pieced together, is this something that, and also with the musical director too, 
Is is that something that's like being worked on quite extensively? Those transitions. Yes. Yeah. We started doing runs. We open next Thursday, but we started doing runs about oh about a week ago, I would say, um, just to try to get those transitions in our heads, so we know when we finish a song where we're going to next. And any roadblocks that might be in the way, like people who are changing in the same space but can't because there's not enough room. So we've been running the show almost every day since last week, um, just so we know what our track is backstage and we can get safely from point A to point B back there (laughs) without tripping over anybody or any instruments or anything else that is also happening. Um, awesome. So, so I guess a big question is, how, how do you remember all of your lines and all of <laughs> the direction? Because you know, this sounds like there's there's more than typically an average show. Because you got all, yeah. all the musical element, you got the singing element, you got the physical lines, and then you've got all the characterization. Yeah, I think it. I think it's different for everybody. For but for myself, I I uh, learn kinesthetically. Um, with movement so as soon as we're up on our feet I usually find it pretty easy to memorize my lines at the very least and my blocking Um, with the music I've been working on it since the middle of January I think Um, because I didn't want to have to worry have that added pressure of worrying Mm. about what chords we're going to or what's this melodic line Um, So there's been a couple of things that I've had to memorize musically that have changed since we started rehearsal. But for the most part, that was most, I would say like 75% in my brain on day one, um, which was, which was nice. And because we're adding so much day by day, um, there's always something new to memorize, but it never, it may feel like a mountain on day one, but you chip away at it and, and, uh, it becomes rote eventually. Awesome. Awesome. And then do, do, do you want to touch on a little bit about the actual physical? So obviously you're rehearsing and then you're going to be moving into the theater probably pretty uh, soon. Do you want to talk a little bit to someone that um, might be coming to the show, show a little bit about the actual playing space itself and the environment? Yes. Of- yeah. So we're actually, we've been really lucky in that we've got to rehearse in the space since last week um so i'm actually on my lunch break right now um in our space uh which is the vertigo um vertigo theater their studio space right next to their main stage um so that's where we're playing in the heart of downtown calgary um and it's been really fun we're starting to add the technical elements this week um i think we're doing a run this afternoon with a little bit of lights and then a little bit of sound tomorrow we're going to be working with costumes uh so day by day there's always something new to be excited about um and yeah we're really lucky to have got to be here way sooner than a lot of uh typical rehearsal spaces would have also and so and so many how many how long do you rehearse a day that's that sort of thing just yeah that is for the kind of time that it takes yeah we've been rehearsing for Oh, when did we start rehearsing? Around February 20th, 21st. Um, And we kind of had a couple of days of uh, what we call table work. So we're working on our characters, uh, sitting at a table. Um, We're talking about the the show and its themes and and, um, that kind of thing. And then we went into um, solid music rehearsal for maybe three or four days. and then we started uh, what they call blocking the show. So literally where you go. Um, and then after that, we did a week of uh, what we call close work. So that's looking closer at the blocking, a little bit closer about what you might have talked about during table work, just to solidify what you're doing in the show. Um, and then since Monday now, we've been working on technical elements and adding those in slowly. Um, so we've been rehearsing for, what is that? Like three and a half weeks, I guess I would say. And we open, we start previews next Tuesday. Um, so from there, I think the rehearsal, the time when we're actually like doing the, the rehearsing elements will be, 
become more and more limited as we begin to focus more on the technical elements uh, like lights and sound. Um, but uh, we're still regularly rehearsing kind of like a full time job until we open the show. Awesome. And it's so it sounds like just a, a magical experience. So it, obviously you, you've been through the you've started you did a lot of work on your own and then and met everybody else, et cetera, et cetera. So, so if you think about the, the whole process of to, as we're talking now, what has been, uh, I guess, the thing you've enjoyed the most, and then also what's been uh, one of the biggest challenges, either for you or the sh 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 show in general so far? Yeah. Um, well, one of my favorite days was our very first day of music rehearsal um, because we started the, the song by ourselves for the first time, and I had been... I think by that point, we all had been rehearsing by ourselves in our houses for the last two and a half months. So I was going a little bit stir crazy, just hearing the recording over and over again. So then to be able to hear it with um, our team for the first time was incredible. I like couldn't get the smile off my face um, because everybody sounded like amazing right from the start. Um, and I, I guess one of the biggest challenges has just been like sorting out all the different elements of the show and making sure they all mesh together. Um, especially as somebody who sometimes works as a musician, sometimes works as an actor, um, and sometimes seldomly does both at the same time, um, meshing those two worlds and acting while producing a good sound on an yeah. instrument or producing a good sound while singing sometimes is a little bit of like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. Um, so it's been challenging, but it, it never stops being amazing because of the team creating together. Also, and, and, then, and then, so I guess my final question, so we've, we've, we've shared, hopefully that gives uh, people when they uh, watch this, uh, that are in the area because uh, a lot of the audience is uh, right now central Alberta based mm -hmm. people that would watch this and hopefully will come check out the show yeah uh, but, but for you personally what, what do you love so much about theater and uh, playing different and uh, musical instruments uh, like more generally and why oh. do you do it oh gosh that's such a big question um it sounds kind of cheesy to say, but I feel like I was meant to do this. When I when I play an instrument and I get to perform that in front of people, uh, I just feel so at home and and so like yeah, this is this is what I'm here to do. This um, is what it to be. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, so that it it's wonderful to be able to share that with an audience. Um, and it's, I feel, uh, because I'm somebody that also works as a composer and a sound designer, uh, that a lot of the time it's such a uh, isolated process of like writing a song or sitting at your computer making music and you're just like hunched over <laughs> like a little troll. Um, so to get out of that headspace sometimes and get to do that and share that with a, with a crowd, um, it's just, it's a fantastic feeling. Also, and and then and then, do you do, do, you, do you, so? How long have you been doing theater and music? Um, I guess full time. Um, I've been completely freelance for the last year ish. Um, awesome. Yeah, but I I uh, graduated from school six years ago, so I've just been trying to make a go of it since then. And finally, last year was like, okay, it's time to take the leap and um, quit my job and. Good when, for you. Yeah, yeah. So because I know a little bit having worked in the space myself, uh, there's a lot of people that enjoy doing it, but sometimes it's hard to transition it into a, a full full time career because of the the nature of the work and the, the, the pendulum swings sometimes with the economy too of how much is going on. And then there's also people a little bit like me that that did it professionally for a while, but then they decided. They, 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 they don't, don't want to do it all the time like on the, on the tech side this is more like yeah. working in like corporate AB and hotels and stuff so they're taking a bit of a different path so like me with media and communications and then mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but I'm still but I'm still doing theatre because it's something I've always enjoyed. So there's yeah. people that might want to different ways, I guess, as well. Yeah, kind of. yeah, exactly. And it's not always easy. Like, I'm not always like, this is the best day of my <laughs> life. I no. love theatre. Um, it's like any, any other job, but um, I'm really grateful to be able to get to do it most of the time. Awesome. So... Th- th- thanks for uh, sharing uh, with the Tea with Mike audience a little bit about the the other Josh Cohen. Yeah. Uh, some of the work that remind me of the, th- the th- company. Burnton Theatricals. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the work that uh, they're doing uh, in the Calgary um, uh, theater scene. Um, this website, this, uh, uh, I guess we're calling it a story, a little bit of a preview. Yeah, so to hope that some of you kind of come come to the show if you live in uh, central Alberta especially uh, you'll be able to watch this on uh, teawithmike.com and then I'll also uh, specifically for this one I'll put it on uh, Facebook because uh, I'm connected with quite a lot of people in in the central Alberta scene so Alex thank you for spending some time with me today good yeah, luck thanks. with the uh, the kind of the rest of the process and Hopefully you'll see uh, uh, some people in the audience will like, I saw this on the, on the Tea with Mike show. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Have a good rehearsal. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's the Tea with Mike show. 